Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Um, so I'm going to be reading two snippets today. Uh, I just want to preface the first one. I'll be rereading a story. Um, but, you know, some people truly have the moral backbone of a chocolate eclair. And uh, this is a story about one of those types of people. Oh, this is Untitled Milk Story. <laughs> the saying goes, don't cry over spilled milk. That did not stop me. I remember being almost impressed by the precision in which you had knocked my drink out of my grasp. You hit only the cup, not my hand. I knew you had done this on purpose. This was your get out of jail free card. Oh, you hit the plastic not me. If there was a game you loved winning, it was semantics. Once when I called these fine line distinctions pedantic, I was told the devil is in the details. But whether you had hit my cup or my hand, I was still covered in milk. At the time, I had told you that people are supposed to leave when someone does something like this. But I didn't. I stayed anyway. The second time, it is me who spills it. We are hustling groceries up the stairs, and I am clinging to a carton between plastic bags filled with bread, pasta, and microwave meals. As you unlock the door, the gallon slips from my hand and strikes the edge of the apartment steps perfectly. It explodes. The carton disintegrates into glorious nothingness as 128 ounces cascade down a flight of steps. I immediately snap into action. I'll clean it up. Don't worry about it. Please go inside. Please just forget this. Please just don't start. But it is too late. You are already inside spewing profanities, tracking the leaking cracked carton through the apartment as it drips onto the carpet. A towel is thrown to my face as I beg you not to help. You insist on it anyway. As I mop up milk from the stairs, you get to do what you love best, criticize. I am sure you relish in it. In the wake of my mistake, you get to say I am stupid. You get to say I am inconsiderate. You get to say I am irresponsible. You get to say I am careless. You now get to gloat, and I have handed you the opportunity on a busted plastic plate. To you, I am always reckless, always thoughtless, always below average in some way. If it isn't the milk, it's the dishes. If it isn't the dishes, it's something I said. Every action and word is always susceptible to scrutiny, analysis, and attack. You critique me for being a perfectionist. You critique me for not being perfect. You critique me for not taking your criticisms well enough. <laughs> After the carton drops, I will apologize to you again and again. I will tell you it is all my fault. I will tell you how terrible I feel. I want you to know I am lying. I want you to know I will like it. I will like that the milk spilling all over the steps make a mess on our neighbor's welcome mat. I will like the way the milk gets into the cracks of the floorboard. I will like that I can't clean all of it up because it will sink in so deeply. I will like how stubborn it is. I will like that the milk insists on staying exactly where it is spilled somehow, some way on the floorboards, on my shoes. I will like that the milk doesn't care what you think or want. I will like that I screwed something up so completely. I will like cleaning up the mess. And if you were thinking the milk was going to be a metaphor for how I'll never be able to heal from you, that you had slipped through the cracks in me and that I will never be able to reach, I want you to know that you are wrong. Maybe you knocked the milk out of my hand the first time, but I am the one who will blow it up completely. I am not your metaphor. I am not your lesson to learn. I am not your mother, and I am not your martyr. And six months from this moment of fulmination on the stairs, I will leave you, and I will be glad that I spilled your fucking milk. Thank you. Obviously, the emotions are a little hot on that one still, but <laughs> I know, it's fine. Okay, um, this is untitled shit and also new shit, so it's a lot of shit, okay? 
Okay. <laughs> when I was three, I believed in God, but I had questions. That's not really true. I had one question, a big question, a question I would repeat again and again and again. My half-crazed mother took me to priests, preachers, rabbis, every time trying to answer, why did God create the world? When I was 16, I did not believe in God, not like those around me. I kept my eyes open during prayer. I sighed when sermons asked if I knew where I was going. I smiled politely when told to believe. Before my grandfather passed into whatever comes next, I spent the night with him in his hospital room. And when I stood beneath the blue light of his heart monitor, I thought, God can exist in this blue light. God can exist in the blue hexagons on my tissue packet I carried at his funeral the next week. God can exist in a baby blue casket, picked because it was his favorite color. God can exist in the blue stained glass of a mausoleum. All of these things can be true. God can exist in the blues. I keep my eyes open during prayer and I brush off sermons. These are human trifles to me. My God is in the blue light. My God is my toddler age self answering my own question. Why did God create the world? So there would be more love. Thank you.